end disease rates now on the rise in the U.S. population in parallel with the introduction and expansion of GMOs. This is deaths from senile dementia. Uh, I could just look over here. Deaths, I mean, excuse me, deaths due to stroke. Deaths due to stroke. And you'll notice the green line is a straight line. That's the trend. That was the trend before 1996. Something happened in 1996 which pushed the totals above that trend. Now, one of the contenders for that was the introduction of genetically modified soy and corn. And you can see in the blue line, that's the percentage of GM soy and corn in the United States. Then there was the Roundup sprayed on the Roundup Ready soy and corn. That's the red line. Now, this is correlation. This is not causation. We don't know if the red and the blue lines are the cause as to why these straight yellow lines are now taller. But we're going to look at several diseases and see if they are in fact pushed up around the time that GMOs and Roundup started to be introduced into our diet. Any questions about this chart? Because we're going to go through the other ones really quickly. All right, I'm just going to name them. Deaths due to stroke, deaths due to senile dementia, and that's just plotted against glyphosate. Well, some will be against glyphosate, which is the active ingredient in Roundup, and some will be both. This is deaths from Alzheimer's. This is deaths from Parkinson's disease. Deaths due to obesity. Deaths due to kidney failure. Hepatitis C. Deaths due to high blood pressure. Deaths due to intestinal infection. Inflammatory bowel disease. Autism. Diabetes. Congenital birth defects. Bile duct cancer and liver cancer pelvic and kidney cancer, urinary and bladder cancer, thyroid cancer, deaths due to leukemia, ADHD, anemia, anxiety, dementia, insomnia, and schizophrenia. Now, one thing we can conclude is that America is sick and getting sicker. Now, I'm proposing that GMOs and glyphosate are not just coincidentally rising in parallel with these diseases, but actually they have a causative effect for perhaps all of them. Now, I'm not the only one that believes that. Thousands of doctors, many, many scientists believe it. So what could possibly be causing such a variety of diseases and disorders? I'm going to show three possible explanations. The first is the process of genetic engineering itself. The process of taking a gene, let's say you want to create a plant, that produces its own toxic insecticide to break open the stomach of insects to kill them. So you take soil bacterium called Bt, or Bacillus thuringiensis, because it produces Bt toxin, which breaks open the stomach of insects to kill them. You take the gene out that produces the toxin, multiply that gene by millions of fold, put it into a gun, shoot that gun into a plate of millions of corn cells, clone those cells into a plant, and now every single cell of that corn plant has a gene-sized spray bottle which kills insects. Now, in the meantime, the DNA of that corn plant has been changed. Thousands, hundreds or thousands of mutations. Two to four percent of the genome is different because of those mutations primarily. You can have genes that are switched on, genes that are switched off, genes that are deleted. And even before you clone, just the insertion of a gene might change the expression levels of those genes up to 5% of them, which could be a 1,000 different genes. 
So these, this is the background noise. When you randomly switch genes and on and off, you can create what the FDA scientists said, allergens, toxins, new diseases, and nutritional problems. They don't look at these changes before they put the crops on the market. Years after Monsanto's most popular BT corn was put on the market, independent scientists found that a gene was switched on to produce gamazine, a known allergen. So people may be dying from eating Monsanto's genetically engineered corn from a product that's unlabeled, that was not evaluated by any regulatory agency in the world, discovered years later by scientists, and then promptly ignored. In their soy, there's all sorts of changes, including up to seven-fold increase in a known soy allergen. There's also an increase in lignin, which is linked to the production of rotenone, which is linked to Parkinson's disease. So genetically engineered soy might increase your risk of Parkinson's disease. So already, what have we looked at? Random changes in the genome that can produce toxins, allergens, carcinogens, or nutritional problems. Which of those diseases that we just saw might be stimulated or exacerbated by these type of changes? Potentially every one of them. Potentially every one of them. So this alone, whether you're creating a golden rice with that vitamin A or who knows what, the process itself might explain the wide variety of diseases. The second cause of problems, we talked about the BT toxin. What about that BT toxin? Is it safe? According to the EPA, which regulates the amount of pesticides put out there, the pesticide portion in the corn, they said it's safe. They said, put it right in the corn. Because farmers use the BT spray already. And it has a history of safe use in the food supply. Well, the, B, the EPA scientists ignored their own advisors. The scientific advisory panel pointed out that the BT in spray form creates immune reactions in humans and animals. It can cause damage to the intestines in animals. And said, it's clear that, there are, that, there's, that these things indicate that. We need to evaluate it. The EPA ignored them. And just let corn produce its own BT toxin, even though the BT in the crops is not the same as the BT in the spray. So not only was the spray dangerous, but the BT in the corn is thousands of times more concentrated, designed to be more toxic, have properties of an allergen. And unlike the spray, it doesn't wash off and biodegrade. It sits encapsulated in the cells of the corn that we eat. And just as the spray created immune system responses in lab animals, so too did mice get an immune response from eating the BT corn. Same thing with rats, Monsanto's own rats. In India, thousands of animals, livestock, died when they were grazing on the BT cotton plants after harvest. Thousands of farm workers reported itching and allergic reactions when exposed to the BT. I looked at those reactions according to a doctor's report and compared it to the reactions of those who were sprayed with BT and they're the same. Whether they're touching the BT cotton plants or sprayed with BT in the Pacific Northwest when it was sprayed for gypsy moth infestation and about 500 people had allergic or flu-like symptoms. Thousands of sheep died after grazing on cotton plants. Here's one village I visited, all 13 of their buffalo died after grazing on BT cotton plants for a single day. They also lost 26 goats and sheep. And I asked them, how many of you have noticed itching rashes in your bodies after working in the field? Most raised their hand. BT toxin is designed to break open the stomach of insects to kill them with little holes. In 2012, in the Journal of Applied Toxicology, it was found that BT toxin pokes holes in human cells. Now, just looking at these aspects of BT toxin, what could, explain, what could it explain from the preceding list chart? All of the immune system responses, right? Because it's an immune trigger. 
And now all the gastrointestinal problems because it's can be poking holes theoretically up and down the gastrointestinal tract. Now, how many people here have heard of leaky gut? All right, so we're preaching to the choir or you're all very sick. <laughs> so leaky gut is holes in the walls of the intestines. Now, when that happens, it's linked to cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, autoimmune disease, inflammation, and food allergies, among others. So that's another group that's on the list, right? Just the leaky gut. Here's how it's related to autoimmune disease. When you eat food, normally it's broken down into eensy beensy pieces. That's a technical term. And then these get into the bloodstream. Now, when there's holes in the intestines, it's only one cell thick. Undigested food proteins can get into the bloodstream. And then the immune system attacks it, thinking it's a, an invader. And then they all get out their cell phones, right? And it, they all take pictures of the invader. They have very old cell phones in the body. They haven't been upgrading. So they take a picture, post it on the Facebook, and it's kind of fuzzy. But the Facebook says, anything that looks like this, go after it. And all the immune system checks their Facebook and then goes after anything that looks like that. But because it's fuzzy, you know what also looks like that is the thyroid or the pancreas or the microvilli lining the intestine. That's what autoimmune disease is. It's based on faulty iPhones. It's when the body attacks itself thinking that it's something else. It's molecular mimicry. And that is correlated very tightly with leaky gut. And, and autoimmune disease is on the rise for sure. So BT toxin, leaky gut, more diseases than it can, it can explain. Now, 93% of the women in Canada tested, they were pregnant women, had BT toxin in their blood. And so did 80% of their unborn fetuses. How did it get in the blood? Maybe it got through those holes that it created. If it gets into the blood, it may be toxic to blood cells, as was shown in this study on mice. If it gets in the blood, how long would it stay there? Not very long. It should wash out quickly. If it washes out quickly, how come 93% of the pregnant women tested had it in their blood? They must be eating it regularly. But this was Canada, not Mexico. They don't eat corn tortillas every day in Canada. Most of the corn that people ingest every day in Canada has no more BT toxin in it, high fructose corn syrup, corn oil, no more BT toxin. So where'd they get the constant source? Scientists speculated that it was the milk and meat of animals because those, milk, those animals eat BT corn every day. I think there's another possible explanation. In the only human feeding study ever conducted on commercialized GMOs, they found that part of the gene inserted into Roundup Ready soybeans transferred into the DNA of bacteria living inside our intestines and stayed there on a stable basis. And that that gut bacteria was unkillable with glyphosate, suggesting but not proving that once it transferred, it continued to function, producing genetically modified proteins 24-7 inside our intestines. They stopped all research. Once they found that, this was funded by the UK government, pro-GMO. As soon as they realized that happened, they pulled the plug on the funding. They never looked to see if the BT gene transfers from corn chips, from polenta, from corn on the cob, taking residence in your gut bacteria and turning it into living pesticide factories. We don't know if it does, but if it does, that might explain why 93% of the pregnant women tested in Canada had BT toxin in their blood because they were producing it in their intestines.